What's up, everybody? It's the Quarter Guy, and, uh, <laughs> I really didn't have anything to talk about last week, but, uh, I've certainly got stuff to talk about this week. Nintendo dropped a Nintendo Direct on of a... Uh, Nintendo dropped a new Direct on us, kind of out of nowhere. It, announced, it was announced on Wednesday and dropped on Thursday, and, uh, surprisingly, they gave us a lot of stuff. How about we start with the 3DS highlights? First off... We're getting a new WarioWare game. I mean, the last Wario game we got was Game and Wario, and uh, who really cares about that one, to be honest? But WarioWare Gold is gonna be probably the is it's gonna be built as the biggest one yet. Over 300 micro games featuring all aspects of the 3DS: touchscreen, gyroscope, microphone. It's it's gonna be good to see the old the old thing back, because WarioWare is quite honestly one of the best things for mindless, simple fun. Well, maybe not exactly mindless, because you gotta be focused on the action on screen, but yeah. A new entry in the Dylan series that start with Dylan's Rolling Western. The game's called Dylan's Dead Heat Breakers. I've never been much interested in the Dylan series, but uh, looks pretty cool. Has a neat aesthetic though. If I want to get into this, if I want to try out the series, I'd probably be the best for me to start from the beginning, though. Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story is getting the remake treatment, along with a new scenario featuring Bowser Jr., which, to be honest, looks pretty similar to the Bowser's Minions in the Superstar Saga remake. It's great Bowser's Inside Story is getting a remake, I absolutely loved it. Though I kind of find it strange that Partners in Time isn't getting a remake either, along with the other two. Doesn't make a lot of sense, to be honest. Only thing I can think of is that Inside that Partners in Time wasn't exactly well re as, as well received as the other two. We got we got more info on Detective Pikachu. Looking forward to that one. Luigi's Mansion is getting a full-on remake on the 3DS. I, uh, Luigi's Mansion was a great launch title for the GameCube, and I'm glad it's getting a remake, especially considering the sort of divisiveness that Dark Moon kind of got, at least at least among my friends, anyway. On to the Switch stuff. Kirby Star Allies is getting free updates, including special Dream Friends. The first batch of them is going to include King DDD, Midnight, and Bandana Waddle Dee, as they appeared in Return to Dreamland. Gooey from Dreamland 3, Rick Kynan Koo from Dreamland 2, and, uh... Probably the biggest oddball out of the bunch, Marks from Kirby Superstar. I mean, seriously, the villain from Milky Way Wishes is becoming an ally? <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty out there if you ask me. I mean, but uh, it's gonna be the first of free updates for Star Allies, and we're gonna get even more Dream Friends in the future. To be honest, I hope we get Daroch from Squeak Squad sometime down the line. I mean, Squeak Squad was a good game. Okami HD is coming to the Switch on a platform from which the game can really benefit. And it's good that it's giving you a choice between the touch screen for the brush and the, uh, the Joy-Con control for the console mode. So, it's nice to see Okami on the Switch. I, I really enjoyed Okami. And, uh, to be honest, a touch screen is a perfect canvas for the Celestial Brush. I mean, it worked for Okami then. We got more news on Octopath Traveler, including a look at two of the, I mean, two more of the protagonists of the game. They're gonna get their own pass, and you'll be able to combine jobs with the, uh, using the jobs of the other other characters, which is pretty neat. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to Octopath Traveler. I mean, I liked the demo. I thought it was a lot of fun. Has some good, has some really good aesthetic to it. Looking forward to that one. We got the first gameplay of Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, and it's looking to be kind of a mix-up of the classic No More Heroes gameplay with some new styles that have to do with the game worlds that Travis is going to be finding himself in. There's going to be co-op play too, so that looks like great. looks like it's pretty fun. That's what, and I'm going to be supporting that game because uh, not only because the game looks pretty good so far, but also if it does well, there's a chance we're going to No More Heroes 3, and I would love that. We all, well, we got more news on Dark Souls. 
Remastered coming to the Switch. It's going to have a network test, so we're going to be able to try the game before actually playing it. And, uh, something I did not expect. Dark Souls is getting an amiibo. Yeah, it's like, if you walked up to me and told me that Dark Souls would be coming to the Switch with an amiibo, I would say you were crazy. <laughs> this is crazy like a fox. And now we're up to the main focus of the Direct, the one that was uh, being mentioned in the uh, plug for it. The latest news on Mario Tennis Aces. And I gotta say, I'm actually hyped for a Mario Tennis game again. I mean, since the, uh, since the one on 3DS and the one on Wii U were not that spectacular from what I understand, this one's looking really good. Especially with how you can charge up your energy to create powerful special shots and uh, speed to get to the ball quicker. This one looks like it's gonna be fun. Especially with the online tournaments. And how you can actually unlock characters by participating in them. That's gonna be sweet. Several games are gonna be on are gonna be coming to the Switch, including Undertale, the Crash Insane Trilogy, um, South Park, the Fractured Butthole, and uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which makes another Wii U game getting ported to the Switch. Well, it, it's also being ported to the 3DS with some new levels being inspired by Odyssey. Which is pretty cool considering Captain Toad showed up in Odyssey to give you power moons when you found him. Which is nice. We also got some big news for Splatoon 2. The next update, version 3.0, is dropping soon. Including new stages, new weapons, and a brand new rank for those who like playing competitively. A rank above S+. They call it... Rank X. <laughs> I gotta admit, they must have taken a cue from Sonic Riders because... <laughs> yeah. But then they dropped something big on us regarding Splatoon 2. The Octo Expansion. A brand new single player campaign where you play as an Octoling, and once you complete that campaign, you'll be able to play as Octolings in actual online play. I gotta admit, that looks pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's gonna be a pit expansion, but for something this expansive, I honestly don't blame them. And considering how much fun I've had with Splatoon 2 during Splatfests, especially. I'm gonna have to complete the main campaign and uh, get this expansion to get more out of this. <laughs> but then, just when we thought that they didn't have a, another big bombshell to drop, they dropped it. And it hit hard. Yeah, at first, like, at first, like, they were gonna show some more stuff for Splatoon, but then the screen darkened, the close-up on the Inkling's face, and, uh, the Smash logo. Oh my god! I did not expect it to, na to be announced this soon. I thought they were going to show it off at E3, but Super Smash Bros. is of course coming to the Switch. And I know I should have expected it, and I knew it was a matter of not if, but when it was going to be announced. But I did not expect it to be announced outside of E3, and to have a projected release date of this year. So yeah, we're getting a new Smash game, the Inklings are going to be in it, and so far, while we don't know for sure, there seems to be hints that it's going to be a new game. To be Smash 5, or at least, like a Smash 4.5. I mean, Smash 4's in engine was really good. I could see it, wor see it being the basis for the next game. But, uh, the logo looks different. The kerning looks different than the Smash 4 logo. They didn't... the, the music that was playing is seemingly might be the main theme for the new game. And uh, in the corner, when they showed the 2018, they said original game. And it's being, a it's being listed as a working title. Whereas the other deluxe versions didn't have that working title thing. So we don't know for sure, but the early indication is that it's going to be a new game. Either way, I am excited because Smash Brothers is friggin' hype. And once again, the speculation begins as to who's gonna make the roster. As it always happens for a new Smash game. In fact, I'm actually thinking of doing that in a few months anyway. The reason I say a few months is because, well, first off, 
I'm hoping to do a collab with someone after... Well, pro it'll probably be for May. The reason, reason I say May is because for April... I finally hit my $250 Patreon milestone. And that means... Well, I'm thankful for everyone who helped support, my ch helped support my channel and helped me get better equipment and research material. I am going to be working on my first Patreon milestone after I complete my next countdown, which is Top 10 3 Mario Worlds. That's right, I am finally going to do that review of Mega Man X7. Which of course means I have to play through the whole game again. God help me. But... It needs to happen, because I made a promise that I was going to do this, so... You're going to see just what bugs me about this game. Anyways, uh... So... With that being said, question of the week... Who do you want to see in the new Smash Brothers game? As always, send me your answers in the comments. Favorite comments will be featured in the next episode. Here are our last episode's winners. And with that, time for the fourth wall mailbag. As always, send me your questions via YouTube messages, and I'll answer my favorites in the next episode. First question this week comes from James Shepard, who asks, Have you ever considered doing a Top 10 Wily Machines countdown? I've actually toyed with the idea, but considering that there are only like 10 Wily Machines, not counting spin-offs or anything like that, but... Uh, It'd probably be sort of thing like worst to best sort of thing. And uh, I haven't always been one for something like that, but I'll keep it in the back of my head. I mean, I'll keep it in my back pocket, just in case I need an idea. Next question comes from Drawboy66, who asks, In your opinion, what was the most shocking video game betrayal? From games I've played, I'm going to take you toward a little obscure game called Batten Kaitos Eternal Wings on the Lost Ocean. It was during the era of the GameCube and released not too long after Tales of Symphonia. I'm not going to go in depth about the game itself, you should go look at a review if you are so inclined. But uh, for those of you who played the game, you know which one I'm talking about. And I'm gonna say, gonna give you a spoiler warning right now. Just uh, skip to the if you, if there's a preview up on the on the time bar scroll. Scroll to when I lift up my uh, notepad again. So it's the point where Callus betrays the party and essentially becomes a secondary villain for a brief for a brief period of time. Well, several hours probably, but. Uh, Still, Kalos—I mean, Kalos was essentially your main character, the character you were controlling for the majority of the game up to this point, and suddenly he turns on you. What? That? I did not see that coming. That—that that was not right. That was not right. It, but it happened, and you actually fought him before he come, came back to his senses. And uh, wow. That was based, that was kind of a shock to my system. It was kind of a point where no one was safe. <laughs> Small world, I guess. Last question this week comes from the Fireball Disaster, who asks, "What do you think they'll do for Blaze Blue's tenth anniversary?" What do you think Cross Tag Battle is? <laughs> Let's rock out!